we could probably get an agreement quite quickly with Putin now, but all he would be doing is regrouping his forces and waiting to go and do it again. We need something that ensures the security of the Ukraine into the future, and that is very, very difficult to achieve, I think. And time to invite you into our daily briefing room, where one of our leading tactical and strategic minds can share their thoughts on the war in Ukraine. We can welcome Admiral Lord West, former Chief of the Naval Staff and a Security Minister under Gordon Brown's administration. Good evening to you, Lord West. Good evening. Um, let me ask you, first of all, tonight, as you look at the situation in, in Ukraine, what are your big takeaways on the state of the, of the war? Well, I, I, I think the biggest one is that one can see that we're running towards a very long slog through the winter and that the Russians, having failed tactically and their military forces, their land forces, performing pretty abysmally, have realised that they need to do something as a game changer. And what they're doing is that they're attacking uh, Ukrainian infrastructure on a bigger and bigger scale. And this is, of course, very, very damaging to the Ukraine and will have a huge impact on them. And nothing that the Ukraine can do in the short term, tactically, on the front against the Russians, will be able to stop that happening. Yes. I've been looking at one or two reports that, again, bring home how... In, while in many many respects the the Ukrainian forces are outnumbered and and outgunned in in many ways, there's obviously a technological um, differential there as well, which is very important. But they're up against a very very powerfully armed enemy. But the ingenuity on the Ukrainian side is quite remarkable. I was seeing how Russians are being made to waste ammunition firing at what turn out to be dummy targets, just 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 dummies to set up in fields uh, to 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 kid the uh, the the, uh, uh, the Russian forces that they are Russian aircraft, for example, where they're they're simply nothing. They they blow up pieces of paper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other thing is the moral component. The moral component is is crucial in war, and the Ukrainians have got that in spades. I mean, there's no doubt they're way way ahead of the Russians in in in, in that area. Um, but but the the Ukrainians are showing themselves very adept at uh, using drones carefully, using new types of weapons. They've created their own weapons. If you look at those uh, attacks by drone uh, little motorboats, I mean they've they've gone further in that I think than any any of the rest of us around the world at any stage. A number of have used airborne drones, but we haven't really used those. But they've shown this willingness to adapt, to use new technology. Um, to to use the digital space really to to make things happen, uh, and this has paid off for them. But as you rightly say, you know the Russians have got a very very large number of people, a large number of uh, land forces, and grinding them down and pushing them out of uh, out of the last bits of land that belong to the Ukraine and are Ukrainian will be very difficult and very long winded and. Uh, yes. It's probably beyond their beyond beyond their capability, actually. And another mark of how Russia's capability has, well, certainly at the outset, was was overestimated. I, I read that the Russian army are using outdated maps, using faulty intelligence. They they advanced into into Ukraine, passing villages and towns they didn't even know existed. Yes, I mean, I think the uh, the thing that has come home very much to us is the the fact, the impact that corruption had on the Russian military. You know, the, 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 as you say, that they, they had things like the wrong maps, they, their logistic supply train, the, the clothing. The, I mean, I think the Russians are going to really suffer this winter. They're having to use their own clothes, most of the Russian soldiers. You know, the commissariat, their commissariat is not providing them with the right kit by any manner or means. And we saw them with tyres that they'd have brought cheap tyres for some of their vehicles, which mm. then burst. You know, the whole raft of these things which have gone wrong, primarily due to corruption. But as I say, the problem the Ukraine is going to have is surviving through this winter with these constant strikes against uh, against their uh, infrastructure. And the, the, the although we can shoot down lots of these, and we are at the moment, and we will give them more anti-air type weapons, we won't be able to stop all of those. No. And, and those will cause more and more damage. And the people repairing them and bringing them back to speed, they're overstretched. And I think we need to look very much at a package how are we going to ensure, how we, the Allies, are going to ensure that they have sufficient power to survive the winter? And I don't know how closely that's being looked at. So, for example, yes. just putting in generators and things, um, again, they will then be targeted if the Russian, and you can find out where these things are, you know, will we put interconnectors in so we can provide power from 
from Poland and places like that into uh, into uh, Ukraine. Yes. I, mean, I think we do need to look at that quite closely. And it would be complacent as the analysts at the Royal United Services Institute have been pointing out, it would be complacent to argue that the Russian forces is so incompetent, so corrupt and so ill-equipped, although in some respects that all those things are true, that they are therefore ineffective because they're far from ineffective. Uh, absolutely, and it's a, it's a grinding, hard slog. And I, that was my point, that I don't think the Ukrainians are capable of pushing pushing them out completely out of the Donbass region and certainly not of taking over Crimea. Um, so, you know, it's in a sense, it's like a sort of stalemate, although they've shown tactically they're, you know, they're agile and they're and, they, and they've inflicted some defeats on the Russians. They're not they haven't beaten the Russians. You know, they, 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 I'm afraid that this is going to be a really long, hard slog. And, yeah. uh, uh, and it's very I'm afraid I can't be very optimistic about it. People are very optimistic about how the Ukraine is performing. It has been amazing. Um, but, you know, it, it, this is this is a real problem. When one looks at things like war crimes, which no doubt the Russians have, they have committed war crimes, it's going to be a long struggle and it will take all of what I call loosely the free world pulling together to ensure that these things are properly investigated and carried forward. And similarly, reconstruction of Ukraine. This has got to be done and we need to think about this now because I'm afraid, and this is a terrible thing to say, you know, the corruption in Ukraine was pretty appalling. Mm. Ukraine is not corrupt country i i spent a certain amount of time there when i was in the intelligence world you know and it is very corrupt and we it's no good just pumping money into there this money has got to be handled and controlled properly because the, the amounts of money involved are are stratospheric is it your view just finally lord rest are you one of those who feel it would be i just over optimistic and unrealistic to imagine that that some sort of peace would eventually arrive on the basis of Russia being entirely evicted from Ukrainian territory. And I'm thinking chiefly about Crimea here. I think that it is unlikely to be that, that there'll be some peace thing because they've managed to push the Russians out of every single bit of uh, the Ukraine, including the Crimea. Um, and but at some stage. It always happens when there's fighting, a war. At some stage, exhaustion, whatever, there will be a, a treaty. My worry is that, it, I mean, we could probably get an agreement quite quickly with Putin now, but all he would be doing is regrouping his forces and waiting to go and do it again. We need something that ensures the security of the Ukraine into the future, and that is very, very difficult to achieve, I think. Okay. Lord West, thank you for sharing your thoughts on in our briefing room today.